breathtaking animation of Demon Slayer has captured the world's attention and truly pushes the boundaries of the medium. There have been many landmark works over the decades that demonstrate the pioneering creativity and unique style of anime artists. Demon Slayer carries that legacy forward, with cinematic quality for every instalment. The sheer consistency of this incredible standard of animation is staggering. And as this story continues, you can witness that world-class animation in the cinema with a special introduction for the next season of Demon Slayer, the Hashira Training Arc. If you're completely new to Demon Slayer or just need a catch up, we've got you covered. I'm Charlie from Gateway to Anime and here's everything you need to know about Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer is set just after the turn of the century during the Taisho period in Japan, a time when many rural communities still lived modest traditional lives. For some, modern advancements like trains and electricity were treated with the same superstition as the demons of folklore. The story begins with tragedy, as young Tanjiro comes home to discover his entire family massacred. The only survivor is his sister, Nezuko. But something isn't right. From the horrific scene and Nezuko's feral aggression, it becomes clear that this is the work of a demon, and his sister has been turned. Tanjiro vows to find a cure for Nezuko and avenge his family learning the way of the sword as he becomes a demon slayer. Demons of this series are similar to vampires. While they are almost immortal and possess superhuman physicality and regeneration abilities, sunlight turns them to ash. These nocturnal predators eat humans and possess unique traits and abilities, yet all of them are the spawn of one original demon named Muzan. Muzan became the first demon after consuming experimental medicine for a terminal illness, made from a rare flower called the blue spider lily. He desperately wants to attain this flower to cure his weakness to the sunlight, but has been unable to find it. Instead, Muzan has been experimenting with creating demons from his own blood, in the hope that eventually one of their unique abilities will be an immunity to sunlight. He can then absorb this demon's powers to become fully immortal. Muzan's 12 strongest servants are known as moons, ranked numerically based on their power levels. These deadly moons display their rank in their iris and possess uniquely terrifying traits. For centuries, demon slayers have protected humanity from these creatures. Their main weapons are Nichiren swords, forged from the sand and ores of high mountains that are forever bathed in sunlight. These rare sunbathed blades enable demon slayers to kill demons by decapitation. An essential part of learning the way of the sword is mastering breathing techniques, such as water breathing or flame breathing, enabling demon slayers to execute powerful strikes that are animated with stunning elemental effects. Each slayer is naturally suited to a specific style, which manifests in the color of their Nichiren sword blade. Just as Muzan has his terrifying moons, there are elite demon slayers known as Hashiras. For the most part, Hashiras are the only humans capable of facing off against one of the moons. Although even these incredible warriors often don't survive the encounter. At this point in the story, Tanjiro has been mentored by some of these Hashiras and even joined them in fighting some of the moons. His sister Nezuko has been with him the whole journey, riding in a wooden crate on his back to avoid sunlight during the day. Against all odds, Nezuko's humanity has been slowly returning as she uses her demonic abilities to help her brother in combat. They've picked up two loyal companions who are also becoming formidable demon slayers. The cowardly Zeritsu can only use his powerful thunder breathing sword style once he falls unconscious. The feral Inosuke wears a boar mask and uses a unique beast breathing, possessing great strength from being raised in the wilderness. From here, it's pretty simple. They go to new locations, meet Hashira to mentor them, and work together to defeat the moons. This also usually involves them nearly dying and the entire location being reduced to rubble. 
In the most recent season, Tanjiro went to the swordsmith village to have his Nichiren sword repaired. While there are many skilled swordsmiths in the village, the creator of his sword, Haganezka, is furious that his work has been so carelessly damaged. Part of the reason it may have been broken, though, could be an incompatibility with Tanjiro's rare breathing technique. While Tanjiro began using water breathing, he's actually the first slayer in generations who can use sun breathing. This rare breathing technique was the very first one from which all others were derived. It was created by the first ever Demon Slayer, who is the only person in history to nearly kill and strike fear into Muzan. By chance, Tanjiro discovers a hidden Nichiren sword forged specifically for sun breathing. But it is centuries old and requires repair from his reluctant swordsmith. While he waits for his new sword, the village is attacked by demons, the upper four and upper five moons. This is where we're about to be dropped into the story. Tanjiro has been working to defend the swordsmith village from some of the most powerful demons in existence. Now, because we're jumping right back in, we'll let you know who's who in this fight and what their abilities are. Tanjiro has been fighting alongside his sister Nezuko and another demon slayer called Genya. He's discovered that by eating demon flesh, he can use some of their strength in battle, which makes him resemble a demon while he fights. But this also prohibits him from using breathing techniques that pair with the Nichiren swords, which is why his primary weapon is a sawn-off shotgun with bullets forged from the same rare alloys. Nezuko's demonic strength also augments her appearance, and her special ability is that her blood can burn demons with pink flame. Their regular companions, Zenitsu and Inosuke, have been away on the other missions and absent for this season. Joining them in the fight are the two Hashiras, Ruichiro Tokito, the Miss Hashira, and Mitsuri Kanruji, the Hashira of Love. Her sword flows like a ribbon with her acrobatic movement, and Muichiro can obscure himself and disorientate his enemies. They have been fighting two upper rank moons. Gyoko is the upper five moon, whose grotesque form rises from a vase, similar to a jin or a genie. Gyoko is obsessed with art and attacks by manifesting fish and sea creatures, often with poisonous effects. Han Tengu is the upper four moon, whose primary form is frail and skeletal. Han Tengu's ability is to split into clones of various forms that represent individual emotions. These clones are formidable adversaries that fight the demon slayers while the main body becomes tiny and flees. Its primary clone for combat is named Zohakten, representing hatred. Zohakten commands giant wooden dragons by striking drums that surround his head. The catch here is that the only way to actually defeat the upper four moon is to cut the head off the main body. That means the tiny main body can flee while our heroes are stuck fighting. Now we've skipped a lot, but that should be roughly all you need to know before heading to the cinemas. This compilation screening is a canonical part of the story, including the last episode of the Swordsmith Village arc and the first episode of the new season, the Hashira training arc. <laughs> The success of Demon Slayer is staggering. Its creator, Koyoharo Gotoge, made the Time 100 Next list in 2021, identifying them as one of the most influential people in the world. Demon Slayer was the most watched anime in Japan last year, and the Mugen Train film remains the highest grossing film of all time in Japan, as well as the highest grossing anime film worldwide. Unlike many older anime films based on popular series, Mugen Train was a canonical part of the story that rewarded fans by continuing the narrative, a trend that is becoming more prominent industry-wide. Demon Slayer represents some of the best that anime has to offer, and watching it at the cinemas is the best way to experience it. Show this video to your friends before taking them to the cinema to experience this incredible anime. This video was produced in conjunction with FOMO Cinema, if you're in Melbourne, have a delicious meal and watch the most exciting new releases or your favourite anime classics at FOMO Cinema. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. You can find us on social media at TikTok and Instagram. And if you really like us, you can head over to our Patreon for some exclusive content. I'm Charlie from Gateway to Anime. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy Demon Slayer.